Yes YouTube, welcome back to another video and thanks for joining me. So in today's video I'm going to go through one of the easiest mosses i found to keep in an aquascape or a low tech setup. So you've been struggling to keep your mosses alive or want something easy to look after to add a bit of greenery into your tank, then make sure you stay tuned because that's all coming up right after this. Okay, so welcome back. So like I said, in today's video, I wanna cover off some easy, well, some mosses I've found that have been successful for me in the past, and I still use them to this day. Now, you've probably already noticed this tank here is covered in moss, and this is actually spike moss. Now, I did initially set this up as a nice detailed aquascape, but it's quickly become a moss mess. And obviously we've got the cherry shrimp in there, which are breeding, and they use that, and the babies hide away from the fish, which is great. But this is a really easy moss to take care of. As you can see, I don't have any specialized lighting on here. It's just a LED light. Um, there's just the, there's no CO2 in here either. The only thing that I have is obviously the shrimp for helping keeping this clean. Now the reason I like this moss is because a lot of mosses when it's grown without CO2 or even at a higher temperature will get quite stringy and just not really form that well. But this moss it does grow out a little bit, but it still forms a nice texture, a nice shape, and more plant-like, like a fern or something like that, I suppose. But I've had massive success with this. I've used it in so many of my tanks and scapes in the past, and still use, it this, still use it to this day. Now, I do actually take trimmings from this tank and put it into my Five Belly Toad Paladarium, where that is added terrestrially, so it even grows really well and spreads out of water. Now, I don't add any fertilizer into this. This is pretty much an easy tank to take care of. I do a weekly water change of about 30-40% and that is literally it. I don't add ferns, I don't add anything. So, if you want to get a moss that's going to take off really quickly, you can take trimmings for other tanks or you have other uses for it. Spike moss is the one for you. There are other mosses that are similar that I found quite easy to take care of, like Java moss, weeping moss, um, Christmas moss, but again, I think this gives something a bit different, a bit more texture, and it's probably not as common as some of the other mosses I just listed. Now, one tip I'd give you, when you are using any type of moss, try and make sure there is plenty of flow running through it. What you want to try and achieve is the moss to just sort of move slightly in the flow, like it would in wind, I suppose. Just, it keeps it then away from algae being able to settle on it you will try, will get better success by doing that as well as if you've got shrimp they'll pick off any of the algae and any of the mess throughout it as well now i keep this tank about 22 to 23 degrees which is which is fine for the fish they seem to be thriving really well the higher the temperature you go the stringier your, your moss is going to grow and the chances are that if you go above 25 degrees the moss will start to yellow out a little bit anyway but I need to trim this back. I've been living with it like this for a long time. It's only when my fiance came in the other day and said, the fish haven't got much room to swim, which seems obvious now that she said it, but when you live with it every day, you don't sort of step back and look at these things. So we're gonna trim this back a little bit now because the particle respora tend to gather around here. The galaxy respora tend to be fine. They swim in and out of it and the shrimp love it. But I wanna try and create a bit more space here and along the top just for the particle respora to have a bit more room. So go ahead and do that now. Do a bit of maintenance on the tank and I'll rejoin you in a little bit.
check out all there. We've been removed a little bit as well. But if you want to create some moss, spike moss. I can't believe how much we got out of there. It's looking a lot better in the sense of you still like to get into the bottom of the tank now. Obviously, there is a lot of dead under there. But there wasn't as much as I thought, considering how much is in there. So hopefully I'll do some good now, give some of the bottom bits of moss a bit more life, and the fish have got a bit more room to swim. Woohoo! Okay, so there's a bit of a mess in here at the moment. I've got this big delivery here, which is the ADA 30C, um, as well as the light and the filtration in there. And that's the starter setup for the new animals gonna be coming very soon, which I'm sure most of you have guessed by now is gonna be a ball python, which probably may come as a surprise to some of you, considering the tropical aspect of this room. But from those of you who watched the Q&A video the other day, you'll know that ball pythons played a massive part in growing up and one of my first reptiles. So really excited to get one back into my life again. Now this is just going to be a temporary setup here because it's going to be a juvenile ball python. If you put them in too big of enclosures they can get stressed out and go off food so obviously we need to do a startup setup. I've got a four foot setup on its way as well and we're going to do that completely bioactive expanding background and something a bit different. So if you want to see what's coming up in the next couple of months and make sure you subscribe. But and I've just got the stool on top of there just out of the way. But I'm not going to unbox this today just because I'm waiting for the stand and there's a little bit of a delay on the stand and the vivarium so it's holding us back a little bit. I did want to get that set up and put on a stand and unbox at least this weekend but that's not going to happen. But plenty of other things we need to get on with. I still need to get some chores done in this room. The list is ever growing so why don't we crack on with a little bit of that. Take a look at some of the animals in the enclosures. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's video and we've taken a look at one of the mosses I find the easiest to maintain in a low-tech setup. Now, I've used this in many setups like I mentioned before, as well as terrestrial setups like the Paladarium. But I think there's plenty of other choices out there. I think just don't be put off, give it a go, try it for yourself. Now, ones I've found quite successful are Christmas moss, Java moss, Willow moss. I haven't tried plain moss yet, but I know that might work for you. Um, I think with the thing with low-tech setups is a lot of the mosses will grow less compact and more strandy and straggly. So just bear that in mind and make sure we're trimming it back so we're not getting dead spots underneath the moss. I say that, look at the tank like it was before today. But I hope you've taken something from today's video. There's plenty of exciting things to come up, including aquascapes, new setups, new animals. And on that note, I'm in communication at the moment trying to get a snake out of Germany. It's proven to be a little bit difficult with everything going on in the world, but I'll keep you updated on that. But I think that's enough of me waffling on for today. Enough from today's video. As always, drop me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, show YouTube if you're enjoying this sort of content. If you're not yet subscribed to this channel yet, then hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you don't miss out any future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.